Hello everyone, welcome to Detangle. In this video, we'll be solving this question. So, this was asked in JE Advanced 2016. Let's go through the question. An infinite line charge of uniform electric charge density lambda. So, we have an infinite line charge of line charge density lambda, which is going to be the total charge present on this divided by length lies along the axis of an electrically conducting infinite cylindrical shell. So, it lies along the axis of an infinite long conducting cylindrical shell. So, this is a infinite long cylindrical shell and it is conducting of radius r. So, the radius is given as r at time t is equal to 0 at t is equal to 0 the space inside the cylinder is filled with a medium of permittivity epsilon and conductivity sigma. So, at t is equal to 0, we are filling this cylinder with some medium like this. The conduction in the material follows Ohm's law. Which one of the following best describes the subsequent variation of the magnitude of current density at any point in the material? So, if we take any point in the material, which one of the following graph will show the variation of current density? Okay. So, say suppose I am taking this point P. Okay. What will be the variation of current density at this point is the question. So, let us see how to solve it. First of all, we must ask why there is a variation in current density. So, Current density as you know it is current flowing per unit area that is say suppose if I have an area like this how much current is flowing in this is current density. So, if there is a current density that means there should be a current flow. So, let us see why there is a current flow or it is obvious from the figure that initially the charges are concentrated like this on this line charge. So, they are not uh, connected. But once you fill this medium, uh, fill this cylinder shell, cylindrical shell with some medium, what happens is the current will flow from, the charges will flow from high concentration to low concentration, right? So, we know that if we have some conductor, let us say we put some positive charges here. You think the positive charges will stay here? No, obviously they are going to repel and they are going to go to the surface, outer surface where the uh, repulsion is minimum. So, the same thing happens initially they are crowded here, but then once you fill this with some conducting medium, the charges are going to come and reflect on the surface. So, when that happens, so initially, initially the density is lambda on this line charge. Final what happens is all the charges would have moved to the outer surface final density would be 0. So, now we know why there is a current flow the uh, charges move from high concentration to low concentration at that moment we will get a current flow or current density. So, we need to know how that current density varies at some point with respect to time. And uh, by looking at all this, we got a little bit of idea how it is going to vary. That is, initially when the charges are concentrated here, the current density will be huge, uh, high. And once they start uh, decreasing, what happens is current density is going to decrease. And once all the charges are coming to the surface, there won't be any charges left to move. So, current density should be zero. So, from that, we are getting to know that out of these, this graph, is not going to work. Why? Because in this, even though at t is equal to infinity, uh, at a later time, there is still some value of current density or constant current flow. We know that does not happen. So, the all the charges will flow and then it is going to stop. So, our answer should lie in any of these three graphs. So, now that uh, we have laid a foundation for our question, let us just see or uh, let us just get little bit mathematical so that we will get to know how exactly it is going to vary. So, we have a linear variation and uh, we have some weird kind of variation and we have some exponential variation. Just see how 
it varies so for that we need to get a little bit mathematical so let's start off with equations we know that so i need to connect the density with time with respect to time so we know that current density is related to electric field using this equation right so say suppose i'm taking some point p here so here i'm going to draw a gaussian surface like this a cylinder because of the symmetry and uh, let its uh, radius be r and uh, let its length be l okay so uh, mainly because this uh, outer cylinder is infinitely long so i'm just going to assume another cylinder uh, so that at this point i just need to know uh, I, i'll get to know how this current density is varying so we know that current density is related to electric field using this equation and from this we know that j is equal to sigma electric field at this point will be lambda by 2 pi epsilon r and uh, you know uh, about this equation right so if you uh, if you are not sure about this equation we just uh, can confirm it so this uh, we can uh, we get from gauss law that is say suppose you have an infinite line charge like this and i need to know how to uh, i need to know the value of electric field at this point i need to know what is the value of electric field at this point so for that what we do is we assume a gaussian surface like this a cylinder because of the symmetry and uh, or maybe uh, this distance the distance where you are finding the electric field let that distance be r and let this length be l so straight away i can use gauss's law so gauss law states that the net flux flowing should be equal to 1 by epsilon naught times q and here uh, the net flux i can write it as electric field into area sh should be equal to q epsilon naught and electric field into area the area should be the curved surface area right all these charges here concentrated charges is going to uh, put out the electric field like this so the net electric field passing through uh, the net electric field is passing through the curved surface area so that is going to be 2 pi r l for this cylinder and q is what lambda into l right the surface charge uh, the line charge density is the total charge present per unit length so total charge is lambda times l by epsilon naught so from this l l cancel i am going to get e is equal to lambda by 2 pi r epsilon naught okay so that's how you get this expression for electric field and since here we have a medium epsilon naught should be re replaced by epsilon why because epsilon epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space well we have connected the current density with the charge density now ultimately we have to connect the current density with time so let's bring in time we know that current is the total charge flowing per unit time and the current i can write in terms of current density that is the current density into area and that should be equal to d by dt of we know the total charge is going to be the current density into the length the total length, uh, the length whichever length we are considering so here in this case in this particular point i can write j into the area should be 2 pi r l right for the cylinder so the uh, current will be flowing like this so the net area should be the curved surface area is equal to here l i can bring it out d lambda by dt so this l and l goes away and i know what is j right j is i can just substitute this relation so j is sigma lambda by 2 pi epsilon r into 2 pi r is equal to d lambda by dt so from this 2 pi r will get cancelled and you will get sigma lambda by epsilon is equal to d lambda by dt so here we are getting d lambda by dt is equal to sigma lambda e epsilon so here we have a nice relation between the the charge density the variation of charge density with respect to time now i know that if i integrate this expression i will get a relation between the charge density and time so that's what i want because 
if I know the relation between charge density and time, I know here J is related to charge density and I just have to substitute that here. So, I will get a relation, how a relation between the current density and time. So, for that I just have to integrate this expression. So, this is going to be, I am going to bring lambda here and dt that side. So, d lambda by lambda is equal to epsilon uh, sigma by epsilon naught dt. So, if I integrate on both side, so here I am integrating from initial concentration which is lambda to some final concentration lambda dash ok and uh, here it should be from 0 to some time t some varying time t here also this lambda dash is some varying lambda dash ok so when I integrate this this is going to be ln lambda is equal to this is going to be sigma epsilon will come outside here I have to substitute the limit lambda to lambda dash here this will come out outside and integration dt is t from 0 to t. So, when I substitute the limit I am going to get ln lambda dash minus ln is equal to epsilon sigma t. So, this is going to be ln lambda dash by lambda is equal to sigma epsilon naught t and lambda dash by lambda is going to be ln I can bring that side. So, this is going to be e raised to sigma epsilon naught t. Okay. Now, I am getting to know that I have done a small mistake here. Why? Because see as per my equation I am going to get lambda dash is equal to lambda e raised to sigma epsilon naught t which is clearly wrong. Why? Because as per my equation the current density is varying or increasing exponentially right this means that it is going to increase exponentially which I know it is not going to happen why because initially there are uh, there is high the uh, initial concentration of current density is lambda high but once they start to flow outside then the current density should decrease or exponentially decrease which means I have made some mistake or I have missed this missed a negative sign here that negative sign should come somewhere here ok that is the variation of lambda with respect to time should be negative of negative of sigma lambda by epsilon ok so that is what happens when you get too mathematical you should be thinking uh, logically also so this minus should be coming everywhere here 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 sorry here ok so there we go we have an equation now since I know how this lambda is going to vary with respect to time I can simply put this lambda value in this expression. So, this is going to be j is equal to sigma la instead of lambda I can put lambda e raised to minus sigma epsilon by 2 pi epsilon r ok lambda or lambda dash just know that this is some lambda which is varying with respect to time. So, this is the variation this is how it is going to vary. So, from this if I take all of these to be constants that is sigma is constant lambda initial uh, current density is constant 2 pi epsilon naught r r will be uh, r will be varying I am sorry. So, if I take these terms constants I am going to get and write this as some j naught I am taking these terms to be constants and this will be e raised to minus sigma by epsilon t divided by r. So, I am getting to know that the j is varying with respect to time also it is varying with respect to the distance that is here I took at this point r but uh, if I take at any other distance it is going to vary with respect to that also and also the main part is we need to know how it is going to vary with respect to time and we are getting to know that it is going to vary exponentially or exponentially it is going to decrease. So, from this we know that correct answer should be C.